Welcome to the Spend Wise Moms channel, your homemaking resource hub. I was in the store a few days ago and I couldn't believe how high some prices are getting. For the average person, you just can't expect to get as much food for your money if you pay full price. Here's some ways I've managed to keep our food bill low despite the increase in prices. First, stretch it out. If you buy a rotisserie chicken at Costco, for $4.99, take all the meat off and freeze it in several bags. Take out the meat when you need it for a recipe, like chicken enchiladas or chicken noodle soup, for example. You get the idea. One chicken lasts us all month by doing this. Next, buy reduced food if it looks okay. I save tons of money buying reduced produce and milk. When I get home from the store, I chop and freeze any produce I can't use in the next few days. It is so nice to be making a recipe and already have frozen chopped onions and peppers on hand. If I were to let the food spoil, then I waste money. If I buy reduced milk, I leave out what we can reasonably use in a couple of days and freeze the rest in usable portions. Remember, you don't save money if you end up throwing something out. Next, use your freezer wisely. I freeze serving size portions of the meals I make so they'll be easy to warm up on days that you just don't feel like cooking. By freezing, I can make a couple of meals in a week and rotate them. I also have them in proper portion sizes so I don't overeat. If I find spinach in the fridge that I can't use in time, I cook it and freeze it. I will find a way to use it later. At least I didn't let it spoil and go to waste. Next, buy on sale. I don't mean spending hours cutting coupons to save money. I'm talking about only buying things that are the best prices. They are called loss leaders since the store loses money to get you to come in hoping that you will buy the rest of your groceries there. You have to use self-control and only buy the deepest discounted items. This is called cherry picking. For example, Albertsons has Yoplait yogurt for 33 cents each this week. So I will buy a dozen yogurts, if that's a limit, even though I won't eat them all in one week. Yogurt usually lasts a few weeks in the fridge. If I don't think I can eat it in time, I'll freeze it and eat it like ice cream or put it in a shake later on. I'll also buy bacon there for $2.99 on sale. You can buy a couple of packages, but I will only buy two because I rarely use bacon. I'll freeze one, and then the other one I'll cook up and then freeze the meat cooked to use in omelets and salads and other recipes in the future. It's so much easier to make an omelet if you have the bacon cooked ahead of time. Last, they have Kellogg cereal for $1.49 each, but you have to buy in groups of three. In our store, there was also a tag by the cereal that said you have to buy six, and then you can get $8 off. It's supposed to be a digital coupon, but I couldn't find it. The salesperson gave me the $8 off because he saw the same sign as well. I ended up paying only $0.94 cents total for the six boxes, or about $0.16 cents per box. I'm sure they'll fix their signs after I left. Anyway, that's all I would buy from this store for this week. Yes, I can't live on dry cereal, bacon, and yogurt, but I have built up a pantry over time buying the best sale items so I have a good variety of foods that I have built up. You buy what's on sale and then you find meals that use those items. Next, be creative. I made this tuna casserole from things in my cupboard and fridge that needed to be used. I usually use cream of celery, but I had cream of mushroom that was expired, so I used that. I added some cheese that needed to be used, some peppers and onions from the freezer, a little bit of broccoli from the fridge, and made a white sauce from some milk that was on its last leg. I also added a can of tuna that had an expiration date coming up soon. Things turned out pretty well, but they are one-time masterpieces that will probably never be duplicated again. I call them clean up the fridge meals. Next, shop from home. Try not to spend any money on food for one week and use what you already have in your fridge and cupboards. Besides reminding you of how nice it is to be able to afford to buy food, it will help you to use some of the old food you already have around so it doesn't get wasted. Next, grow a garden. I can't begin to tell you how much money we save from gardening. 
Look at how much produce I have frozen just from this past summer that will last most of the winter. It sure saves on the food bill and gives you quality organic produce to eat. Last, make your own meals. If you don't know how to cook, ask a friend to teach you. Making your own bread, tortillas, snacks, desserts, and meals saves a lot of money. Apart from our garden, this has probably been the best way I have saved money on food. You can also make things to taste the way you want, which is really nice. I hope these ideas will help you to save money on your food bill. Thanks for watching the Spendwise Moms channel. Please subscribe for more videos just like this.